This bill's bipartisan all the way. I mean, the maybe way. some question about getting the kids iPads or computers or something, sure. which is a problem I, I think everybody recognizes. However, I'm reading your bill. Transition from paper textbooks to digital media. That sounds revolutionary, and is it possible to do by 2017? Well, I think it's absolutely possible to do. The, the wow. technology is advancing in such a, at such a rapid pace, and the fact is that prices are coming down. There's ways to save money moving from textbooks to digital education, and, and then you add into the interactiveness of digital education. What an exciting time in North Carolina and for North Carolina students. You've got a bill to study the, the, the wireless grid, if you can call it that, for right. internet connectivity with public schools. and. Uh, how do you think our grid looks when it comes to getting broadband internet where you think it needs to be? I'm told already that we are among the top three to five states in the United States in connectivity, broadband connectivity. Uh, that's not good enough. It's when it's 100%, I'll be really happy. But we are already ahead of the rest of the country. But that's a caution to don't stop now, and that's the purpose behind this bill. We can't finish this job if we don't know what finish means, and that's the purpose of getting this study find out what we're up against and we can sprint to the to the finish line. Is this a project that can be done if the data backs it up or is it a will be done we just have to find a way to do it? It will be done we're, and we will find a way to do it. What do you make of Representative Ross? She supported your bills. Right. I didn't hear her say no I should say. And But she says you know we got kids don't have computers. Some schools don't have proper internet to be honest. And maybe the carts before the horse on this, you're missing a piece of legislation that might would supply kids with the technology. How do you handle that as a, as a, as a conservative and, and, right. and get kids what they need? I'm not at all convinced that the state should be in the device business. I, as I said in my testimony, it's not a one size fits all. It's not, there's no perfect device. It's a what size fits me, what device works best for my school system or for my students. And we know that, that different devices ha have, in fact, different purposes. At younger grades, you're looking for a device that's more receptive than productive. As you move up in the grades, you need a more productive piece. So that could be a different device. We don't know what devices are going to be even available two years from now, let alone five years from now. So let's not get the cart before the horse. Could, so you want to wait for the technology to emerge when 2017 hits? No, no. We want to start setting up the, the, the standards. We want to be working to improve our ability to deliver digital education. We want to blend it with, with traditional education models. Well, we're, we're not at all willing to wait. We know that technology is going to change every day, every month, every year, and, but we still have to have broad guidelines. We've got to be preparing, and in many cases, we're not preparing. We're still with the pencil and paper. On the choice of which technology to use in the classroom, would you defer that down to the local system where you would fund maybe whatever technology the local system decides, as if, as if it were a textbook, or do you push it back on the parents to fund the purchase of the equipment, which would be about like going to college and buying your own textbook? Well, I'm not ready to make that final decision other than to say I think that the decision should be made at the local level, at the LEAs and in the home, not the state dictating that this is the right device. Thank you, Representative.